Hello, my name's Eve, and you're watching ONM Daily. Hello, guys and dolls, and welcome to ONM Daily. Did you like my opening? Here's an alternate take. Alright, my name's Slaso, and you're watching ONM Daily. Alright, pal. Yeah, so. Um, it's the future now. It's 2011. How are you all doing? Did you have a good Christmas? New Year? Yeah, I was pretty ill. Both times, yeah. Both days. Christmas Day and New Year's Day. I either had a really bad cold or a not very bad flu. I can't quite work it out, but I'm still... Still got a bit of it, so my voice is a bit weird. And my throat's a bit sore. <coughs> no, cough sometimes. But, um, on to the real subject of this. I went to see the film 127 Hours yesterday by Danny Boyle, starring James Franco, and oh, it was phenomenal. Oh, the most wonderful piece of filmmaking I've seen recently. Like, just heart wrenching and so sad and so wonderful, but heartwarming at the same time. But it got me thinking that although it's only 10 days in, it's certainly a contender for a film of 2011 for me. And I think that's nice, but in thinking forward, it got me thinking back to the last year, and I decided to talk a little bit about each of my favourite films of last year, four of them, four favourite films from last year, in no particular order. So, let's get started. First one I'm going to talk about is Inception. Ooh, can you actually shot? Inception by Christopher Nolan. I don't want to go too much into the plot of Inception because I think it's one of those films that you need to experience to really get, although it might take more than one watch to get the film. It's the kind of thing that happens when Hollywood isn't afraid to do a blockbuster with brains. It's smart and it's very beautiful, special and blurry. Mmm, sexy, sexy blurry. And it's really hard to describe. It's hard to describe to people without giving away too much of the plot. And I don't want to do that because it's just, it's mind bending and it's awesome. And you should definitely, definitely check out Inception. I know a lot of people in O&M love it. So there's not a lot of reason for me to go into it in great depth. So if you haven't seen it, see it. If you've already seen it, watch it again. Because it's, I'd say it's better on the second watch. And I'm going to watch it again pretty soon, hopefully for the 365. So, Inception. Go see Inception. Second movie I'm going to talk about is Toy Story 3. Uh, this just came today, so it's quite lucky. And, oh, it's so sad. Such a good film. So sad. The majority of you will have grown up obviously watching Toy Story and Toy Story 2 and this is just one of the best closing chapters of a trilogy in cinema history. It's it's a goodbye and a farewell and it's just beautiful. It's these characters that you've grown up with and Pixar really do have some balls when it comes to um, putting their characters in um, horrible situations. And I don't want to spoil it, but I know everyone that's seen it will know the bit I'm talking about near the end, where you think that uh, that could be well, could well be it for our lovely cowboy and spaceman friends. But obviously, it's a Disney film, so <laughs> everything turns out okay. But. It's just a beautiful film and such a fantastic closing chapter. The third film I'd like to talk about is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Man, look at that. That lovely, lovely steelbook. It's already really rare. It's already you can't get it from Amazon at least. There's sellers trying to sell it for about £39. But this is... For, for me to tell a gaming forum to go and see Scott Pilgrim seems a little moot. Because the people that will have seen it 
will have loved it. And the people that haven't, I mean, what are you doing on O&M? I mean, really? Anybody who pl like grew up with 8-bit and 16-bit games and a fan of that kind of, you know, style should definitely, definitely check this out. I mean, I know it's got a huge following on O&M already. But, I mean, that's why they're popular. That's why they're really good films. And books. I've not read the books, but, you know, the film is fantastic. And definitely one of my favourite films of 2010. It's very British at heart as well, which is what I quite like about it, directed by Edgar Wright. It's got a kind of very British sensibility with an American vein running through the middle. And it's stylish and it's sexy and it's awesome and Michael Sarah is very good at playing Michael Sarah. So go watch Scott Pilgrim vs the World. Coming up to the fourth, it's at this point I realised that there's definitely direct correlation between the films that I love and the films that I get on Blu-ray. So, um, anyway, Kick Ass. This was definitely, although this is in no particular order, Kick Ass was definitely my favourite film of 2010. I almost said 2011, 2010. I saw it at the cinema three times and so far watched my Blu-ray copy twice. And, oh, this film just blew me away when I saw it. Just it's not anything particularly original, but it's the way it's done, the way it's handled, I think is just awesome. And the way they made a cinematic icon out of Hit Girl, Chloe Moretz, who's fantastic, phenomenal. Yeah, I'm back, so um, apparently my camera ran out of battery uh, mid-sentence. I was saying Chloe Moretz was fantastic, phenomenal. And um, it was just a wonderful film, the way it was handled. It had so much emotion as well as obviously the action and the comedy and there was a lot of controversy surrounding it mainly to do with Chloe Moretz's Hit Girl but with the sequel coming out next year I think and Chloe Moretz getting a bigger part in that I honestly cannot wait just a phenomenal film from start to finish just stellar performances from all of the cast as well I mean Nick Cage is basically Adam West it's brilliant. So if you haven't seen it already, pick up Kick-Ass. Uh, you can get the DVD really cheap now, but it looks really good on Blu-ray, so if you've got a Blu-ray player, get on Blu-ray. Again, lovely steelbook. Just Kick-Ass, favourite film of 2010. So that's the end. It's a shorter video than I usually post, but that's because I'm not following all the questions. So I hope you enjoyed it. I was a bit rambly. I'm still a bit ill, as I said, and I'm quite freezing in this room, but hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching. Later days.